Okay, how's it going today? We're going to, well, actually, hold on. Before we get started, I'll just introduce myself. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Nick Baldwin. I am uh, the regional technology director for the LA coastal region. So I work with Stacy, uh, Stacy States out there, and she brought me in to kind of teach some classes uh, and um, get uh, get to know the top 20% and have some one-on-ones with you guys and sh see what you guys are doing in your business and see if I can help you uh, leverage our technology more than you're already doing. Or maybe just give you some ideas on how to use command better. Or if you just want to use it as a therapy session when we meet, that's fine too. We're all, we're realtors. We double as therapists. Um, so we all know how that goes. Um, I'm also a co-founder of Lab Code Agents, which is the largest real estate um, community on the internet. So if you're not a member of Lab Codes, please join. Um, and I also have a group on Facebook called Command Your Conversion, which is a KW um, focused group all around technology and things like that. So I'm happy to be here and I'm going to be doing monthly classes uh, for just you guys. And after the class, I will send you the recording along with my calendar link. So if you guys want to book one-on-one -on -one meetings with me to kind of go over command and, you know, see if I can teach you some stuff and see if we can um, get to know your business a little bit better. It's only for the top 20%. So I'll send you the calendar link and book as many appointments as you want. And we'll have a good time. All right. So I'm going to jump into uh, my presentation here. And today we're learning about how to, well, today I'm going to show you a few things, um, but the class is called a million a month with command and Facebook. And the, the reason I call it that is because in 2021, uh, I generated 15 million in qualified business through KW command using Facebook and using Facebook ads through command. And I used the consumer website, the KW consumer website to generate those leads. And there's so much content on the consumer sites that it really does help you generate much better, higher quality leads. Um, so you don't just have to do it just listed or just sold. You can do lots of different types of things. And I'm going to show you one particular campaign um, in particular. So um, then we're going to go on to learning about a smart plan, which smart plan you could be using uh, to, to have better replies and better conversions. It's a smart plan that I built with text scripts that are very specific for where Facebook leads are in the buying or selling cycle. And then we're going to build a campaign together. We're going to jump into designs for a few minutes and create a, a template so your campaign looks beautiful. So we're going to cover a few different things. So hunker down. Um, I just want to say, if you have any questions, drop them in the chat. I will check them periodically, um, in between segments and see if I can answer some questions. And, um, uh, if I'm going too fast, I'll try to go as slow as I can in the time allotted, but there's going to be a replay. Uh, so you'll be able to stop and start that, um, uh, as, uh, as you like. So let's get started. So first, we're going to talk about consumer websites. Now, I remember when KW uh, released our consumer sites about four or so years ago, there was um, most of the agents just didn't really enjoy the way they looked, right? So we're used to real estate agent websites looking a certain way, like having our team there with that strike a pose, like GQ pose with our hands folded. And we got all of our people behind us and you know, we've got pictures of our awards and we have how many homes we sold and all this stuff. And our websites are typically very agent centric. And the consumer doesn't really like that, right? Like there's a reason why the consumer goes to Zillow and goes to realtor.com. There's a reason. It's because Zillow and realtor.com are consumer centric. They're catering to the consumer. It's not about the agent, but you can find an agent if and when you're ready but it's not about the agent. So here's some examples of some websites that are consumer facing. They look identical. You could swap out the logos and you wouldn't know the difference, right? 
Or let's take a look at homes.com and realtor.com. Exactly the same. Same exact concept, pictures of houses, search bar, buy, rent, whatever. They all look very, very similar. So that's why our websites look like that. Why should we reinvent the wheel and make our websites very agent-centric and complicated when Zillow and Realtor.com and Homes.com have spent billions of dollars to figure out how consumers want to search for homes? So why don't we just do that? So that's why our KW website looks the way it looks. Now, there's going to be some updates to the website coming out um, over the next several months. KW is working hard to give you more customi customizable uh, aspects to it. So you can add more internal pages that are just easier to create. Right now, it's a, that aspect of it's a little bit clunky. But the site, like the inner workings of the site and the information on the site is really, really valuable and great. Um, I want to kind of talk a little bit about our websites um, in relation to Zillow and Realtor.com, right? So it used to be that we were fighting this, this listing war, like give our listings back to us. We don't want you to use our listings. We, we want to hope we want to keep them. That war has been battled and it's been lost and it's a moot point at this point, but there's a new war of brewing and it's the data war, the information war, whichever website has the most data or which has the most information is going to be the site that gets the most eyeballs because consumers are so like, data hungry, right? Like they could look for listings anywhere, but they can't find the, the the exact data they're looking for anywhere, right? So right now is basically Zillow versus KW, Nextdoor, Smarter Agent Mobile, and Google. So you guys know KW. And if you don't know Nextdoor, it's a company that we partnered with. It's a social media app or and website that allows people to create neighborhoods and then they join these neighborhoods based on whether they live there and then they can communicate with their neighbors on this app. So we have taken the next door neighborhoods and we've put it onto our website. So our website has information on zip codes, town and city, and then we can go one step further and get neighborhood information, which is something that Zillow and Realtor.com don't have. Uh, because real estate is more than just a zip code, it's a specific neighborhood. And we're going to get more into that later. Smarter Agent Mobile is the company that KW acquired several years ago to create our consumer app. And that gives us access to a thousand MLSs across the country because your website is nationwide. In fact, your website is global at this point. There are listings all across the world on your website, not just all across the country. And Google, we've partnered with Google to, to integrate Yelp and Google Directions and Google Maps and all of the good things that are Google. We have that on our websites. So this is uh, one of the fun things that you can do. And I'm going to jump into the website in a few minutes. But one of the fun things you can do with the Google, with the Google integration is you can search by a landmark. So if you want to search for a coffee shop or a shopping mall or your job or an elementary school like this one, all you have to do is know the name of it, type it into the search bar, and it takes you right to that location. You don't have to only know addresses for properties. You can look up specific landmarks and then see what is for sale around those specific landmarks. So that's something you cannot do on Zillow or Realtor.com. Here's how the neighborhoods look on the website. We're going to get into those in a minute in more detail, but it's the map. And there are blue boundaries around certain areas of that map. This is a zip code. So you have the zip code is broken down into smaller pieces. So each one of these pieces have their, has their own market data. And so this is how the websites work. And we're going to create some, uh, an ad that, that's very similar to one of these. Um, it's going to probably be homes or condos for sale. Uh, but here's some examples of, of ads that I've created in the past. That, are, that have been very successful. So this is an open house ad. You can create an ad advertising open houses from your website. Um, maybe not in Boise. Maybe in Boise, the pool aspect won't be such a big seller, but this was an ad that I created for um, uh, a New Jersey client of mine. And then over here, I did a um, uh, homes that have recently uh, sold ads. So you can do lots of different 
campaigns with your with your KW site. But today we're going to advertise specific homes for sale in a particular neighborhood, and that's going to bring you higher quality uh, potential consumers that want to actually have conversations with you. So I'm going to jump into my website. Here's my website. Uh, if there are any questions, feel free to drop them right in the chat. What's the zip code for where you guys are? Or should I just type Boise? You can, 83709 is where our office is. Oh, okay, 83709. So I'm gonna search for properties near 83709. The reason is because when I search in 83709, I won't get the neighborhoods. I'll just get the actual uh, zip code. But if I search for properties near it, then I'll be able to get the neighborhoods. So you won't see the neighborhoods right away. You have to zoom in. So I'm gonna zoom in a little bit here. And when you start to zoom in, you start to see neighborhoods, okay? These are all, there's a lot of neighborhoods, lots of little neighborhoods. And when I zoom in a little bit more, then I start to see the names of these neighborhoods, okay? So over here, this it, for, at first glance, the website looks very basic, very normal. You get your map on one side, you got your houses on the other, but there's a couple things that are different. The neighborhoods on the map, and then of course the neighborhoods are also up here, okay? So when you hover over them, they get shaded on the map, and there's lots of different neighborhoods that you can that you can see. Um, and it gives you a little snapshot of that particular neighborhood um, by itself, not just the zip code. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this neighborhood because it's huge and there's probably a good amount of data there. So I'm going to click on that. Watch what happens when I click on that. When I click on that, all the listings around it disappear. So I'm only focused now on this little corner of the world. Okay. And we can see up here, the consumer sees uh, the little snapshot, 51 days on market, average home price, average price per square foot, okay? Then if the consumer wants to then start uh, um, figuring out their criteria, they can. Now, by the way, I'm acting as a consumer because it's the consumer platform. So I'm acting as a consumer at this, pretend I'm a consumer, right? The agent obviously can use their website like this, but this is how the consumers would use it. So I'm just going to unclick all of these and I'm gonna see for, for sale only. And let's look at price, okay? So I can type in, I don't know, let's do like, uh, let's do 349 and to, like, and you can type it in and then you can scroll to so like 700 and click done. Okay, so that narrows it down. You can also then do property type, houses, apartments, condos. So let's do houses. And then we'll do like three beds. Okay, so now I've narrowed it down to 15 properties in this particular neighborhood that I might be interested in. Okay, so that's how a consumer would locate a neighborhood and then hone in a little bit more um, in terms of what they're looking for. They can save this search. When they click save search, it prompts them to sign up for the website, okay? So that's a, a forced registration. There's a couple other forced registration aspects to it as well, and I'll show you that in a minute. You can turn those on, you can turn those off. But forced registration combined with your Facebook ads really do drive signups on your website. And when someone signs up on your website, that's a smoking hot lead. So we like those. Now I want to explore this neighborhood. And when you start exploring the neighborhood, this is an example. This, this page, I'm just going to mute everybody. This page is a page that your consumers have never seen before. They've never seen anything like this because of our exclusive partnerships with Google and Nextdoor, okay? So they've never seen a neighborhood page like this before, okay? 
So there's a lot of things that are happening here. So let's scroll down. Well, by the way, they can also click on houses and see, you know, what's going on in that on the map here. But if we scroll down, we'll see um, a market snapshot. Are you guys a non-disclosure state by any chance? Just type in the chat, yes or no. Yes, yes, okay. we are. <laughs> okay, so that's why there's no recently sold stats. Okay, so, but if you click on this, you can see a breakdown of average home price. If you scroll down, you'll be able to see properties that are for sale, any upcoming open houses, anything that maybe is pending. And then we can see what locals are saying about living here. This is a pretty cool feature. As real estate agents, we get asked a lot who lives here. Right? We can't answer that question because who lives there? We do. That's a fair housing violation waiting to happen. But we can tell people what locals are saying about living here. So they like organized sports. They like coffee. They like to dance. They're into gardening and yoga. Right. So this will help someone identify whether or not they think that they're going to enjoy living in the neighborhood um, when they see that people have interests that they do. When we scroll down, we can search for a location. So if you search for a place, again, you're prompted to create an account, but this can calculate a route to any um, any location, which is pretty sweet. And we have schools and then places. So this is this is a Yelp integration and we can see a bunch of highlights or we can just see restaurants only. And when we hover over the restaurant, it indicates on the map and vice versa on the map as well. So then down here, we have um, extra other neighborhoods that are similar to the one that we're looking at. Okay, um, there's a couple of things I wanna show you. Uh, when I click on, a couple more things I wanna show you. When I click on follow, I have to log in, okay? Because if I'm following a neighborhood, um, I have to I have to create my account. So let me log in. All right. So when I click follow, that allows me to keep track as a consumer. It allows me to keep track of what's happening in this neighborhood. So when I click at the top and I click on saved, I have all my saved searches, but then I can see the neighborhoods that I'm following. And you can see that I just started following Bora. Okay. I'm going to click view all. Whoop, hold on one second. Let me, oh, no, I'm not going to click view all. I want to click feed. Okay, so I'm, I've am i saved Bora. I'm following Bora, the Bora neighborhood. But I'm going to click on feed. And when I click on feed, there's a few things that are happening here. The consumer will see all of their saved searches and all of the ho homes that they have favorited in their feed. But they'll also see what's called a neighborhood pulse. When I click on neighborhood pulse, these are all of the neighborhoods that I'm following. And I get to see six months of market data. So a couple of things. It shows me active listings, shows me pendings, days on market, average listing price. Then over here, it shows me the past six months from March to August. All right. The average listing price was 513. Okay. And it shows that it has gone down 2.8%. All right, when I scroll down, I can then do something really cool as a consumer. I can compare the neighborhood right here, Bora, to Boise as a city. And I can compare it by city, zip code, county, state. So watch, watch this number. The Boise number will change. The Bora number will stay the same. I'm going to click on zip code. Okay, that changed for, to 479. When I click on county, that changed to 638. When I click on state, that changed to 672. So you can see how Bora or the neighborhood that you're looking at compares to the city, zip code, county, or state. And the graph moves up and up and down as the past six months, uh, as it shows the past six months, then over here, average price per square foot. This is pretty sweet. This is one of my favorite features. Um, just a little interactive things for the consumer to, um, to play around with. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what we're going to do in terms of building out um, uh, a, um, a Facebook ad, okay? So we're going to go into Boise as an entire city, 
And when we create our Facebook ad, we're going to be leading them back to our KW site. All right, now I put on my force registration. Let me turn, let me log out of my website so I can show you what the force registration. Okay, so if I'm a new, if I'm a consumer coming to the website for the first time, I've turned on my force registration. I'll show you where that is. Don't worry, I'll show you where that is. And they click on a property. And I am prompted to sign up to look at homes. Okay. And this is a great feature. In the last ad that I ran, um, I got 29 leads for $50. Uh, so you do the math, I believe it's like 172. And I got five people to sign up for my website, which is awesome. That's huge. Five people out of 29 to create accounts. Huge, right? So I want to have my forced registration on. But what I'm going to do with my ad is I'm going to advertise a certain type of property for sale. Let's see. Okay, so I'm going to do a condo campaign. All right. So let me reset this and show you. When I'm creating a campaign, I'm going to advertise like homes for sale, condos for sale. I could advertise open houses for sale. You advertise open houses by going, clicking on more and then scrolling to the bottom and there's an open house um, feature and you click that and it shows you the, the open houses. You can also create an ad that shows price reductions in the last seven days. If you click on that, you can use these price, re price reductions you can see the price re reductions in the in the listings. You can create an ad advertising homes that have recently received price reductions. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to do homes. I'm going to do condos and townhomes. So I'm going to create a Facebook ad advertising townhomes and condos. So in order to do that, I'm on my site. I need to go to property type, and then I need to click on homes and con uh, townhomes and condos. Okay. It's a very niche. Um, it's a very niche, um, you know, um, criteria, all right, which is what I want. Okay. So I'm going to come back to this. I'm going to come back to this. I'm going to leave my website open because when we create our Facebook ad, you're going to use this link to direct them to. So we're going to leave this, we're going to leave this open. Okay. And now I'm going to go to command and I'm going to go into designs. Oops, I'm in the wrong command account. Let me just log out. I was in someone else's command account. Okay, so now I'm going to go into designs and I'm going to show you how to create a quick design to advertise condos for sale. All right, let's click create design and we're gonna click on social and then we're gonna continue. This is a great type of ad to run if you don't have listings um, because we're gonna use, because you could because you could potential, 30% by the way, 30% of people who bought a house last year had to um, sell a house. So it's a great, um, it's a great way to also get in front of sellers. So if you don't have listings or you need more buyers, this is one of the best ads to types of ads to run. So we're in campaigns and we're going to go to listings, which is a subcategory. And I'm going to click on for sale. And then what you have here are lots of different templates, like hundreds of templates. Social wide, which is for Facebook. Twitter, LinkedIn, Social Square, which is for Facebook and Instagram. Then you've got Social Stories for Instagram and Facebook Stories. But we're going to use a Social Square template, and I am going to use this template right here because it's super easy to customize. And I am going to click Use. All right, so. What I want to do is change this change this verbiage here. I don't want it to say too good not to share. I want it to say condos for sale in Boise. So I'm just going to highlight condos and then we want to make it a little bit bigger.
for sale. In Boise. There we go. And let's just center it as much as we can. Okay, cool. So if you want to change the background, it's very simple. You click on the background and you go to a couple things. You can go to stock images and then we have an integration with uh, Shutterstock and you can look up tons of royalty free images or you can just go to workspace and then KW has some folders here that have just generic images, okay? So we wanna do um, house interiors. You could find one that kind of looks like a condo in the area, right? Let, let's just say like, let's just say that, um, you know, this was it, right? Let's just say, I would click it and just bring it over here and boom, there you go, okay? It's just changed the background. I'm just gonna change my logo. And now we have our image, which I made in less than 30 seconds, probably. Okay, we'll give it a name. And save it. Okay, so you don't need to download it. Everything can stay right in command. You don't need to download it to your hard drive. Everything is going to stay right in command, which is awesome. And I'll show you uh, how to bring this image from designs over into your uh, into your campaign. Let me know if there's any questions in the chat. I'd love to answer any. Um, let me know. Just don't be shy. Drop a question in the chat uh, just to let me know that you're still breathing that'd be awesome <laughs> okay so now what we're going to do is we're going to click done okay dan's still breathing thank goodness and monica thank goodness glad you guys are still breathing rachel says inhale <laughs> joyce love this thanks joyce appreciate that we can have a little fun while we create some ads. All right, now we're gonna go into smart plans, okay? Before I go into, before I go into smart plans, um, because I wanna show you the smart plan so we can add it to our campaign. Um, Facebook ads are, I'm sorry, Facebook leads are, much different than, let me stop sharing for a second so you don't have to stare at that. Facebook leads are much, much different than any other internet lead out there. They're different than Google. They're different than Realtor.com and Zillow. And the reason why they're different is because unlike Google, Facebook leads aren't searching you out, right? They're not looking for you, so to speak. They happen to find you because Facebook puts your campaign in front of their face thinking this would be a good person to see this, right? Whereas someone who is a Google lead, and they go to their computer and they type in homes for sale in Boise or condos for sale in Boise or realtors in Boise, they're actively search seeking you out, right? So the motivation factor, I shouldn't say motivation factor. I should say the readiness factor is higher with a Google lead. With Zillow, obviously they click the request to see a property button. They want to see that home, like super hot lead, but it's a thousand bucks, right? So you're paying, uh, you're paying according accordingly. So a Facebook lead could be two dollars, right? But it might be someone you got to nurture for nine months. A Google lead could be like fifteen dollars. You don't have to nurture them for as long, maybe four or five, six months. A Zillow lead, you don't have to nurture at all. It's just speed the lead. Whoever gets there first shows the house and writes the contract but then you got to pay it through the you know what for that. So Facebook leads are what they call top of funnel. So they're not necessarily less motivated. They're just less ready because they weren't actively seeking you out. They didn't go to Facebook to look for a house. They went to Facebook to interact with their friends and they happened to see a housing app. 
All right. So I hope that makes sense. Doesn't mean that they're bad. It just means that you might need to nurture or follow up longer and more often than usual. And that's where smart plans come into play. So I'm going to go into the smart plan library and I'm going to tell you guys where to find the smart plan that I created that works really, really well and you can use it. Okay. So just click on smart plan name once you're in the library and then click on author and then just look me up. And you'll see all my smart plans, but I want you to scroll down to the bottom because I want you to use this one, revised town property specific Facebook follow-up. It just says revised because I revised it and re-added it to the, to the library. Looks like 800 people. You can see like 800 people are using it. It has four and a half stars, 21 steps, uh, 21 steps, 28 days and 11 touches. All right. So what you're going to do is you're going to click add smart plan, download, download. Okay. That's how you're going to add it. Then we're going to go into my smart plans and we're going to look it up. All right. And I'm going to show you what it says. So you are aware. All right. All of the scripts that I put in here. Okay. So Don's asking which plan type in my name under author. Scroll all the way to the bottom and it's revised town property specific Facebook follow-up. You can use it for, um, you can use it for new listings. You can use it for homes for sale. It's really very versatile. Okay. So you don't have to edit it at all. Thanks, Jill. Appreciate that. She dropped it in there. All right. But I highly suggest you go through the campaign first and make sure I don't have any typos because I probably do because I'm a horrible speller. So make sure there's no typos and make sure everything looks good and branded to you and all that stuff. All right. So here is what the first text message says. Lee comes in, text goes out. Hi, contact first name. That's a merge field. A merge field can be found over here next to the text box when you click that it's just aspects of the contact information you can implement that you input so when the lead comes in um it adds their name right so hi jill it's nick with keller williams and i put homes for sale on facebook and you clicked on them i'm sure you're not looking to make a move just yet but is that an area of interest to you so i am handling an objection before they give it to me. I'm not ready to move. I was just looking. So I'm going to say that before they even say it. I'm sure you're not looking to make a move just yet. But you're asking, is that an area of interest to you? So you're not asking, how can I help you? You're not asking, when can I see that property? You're asking, is that an area of interest to you? Okay. Then it's going to send out an email at the exact same time. And it's going to say the exact same thing. We just want to make sure we have the contact information the right way. And who, however they reply to you is how you reply. If they reply th through text, you reply through text. If they reply through email, you reply through email. Always communicate with them the way they communicate with you. All right. And then on day two, you're going to get a task reminder. And tasks can be found on the homepage of command. They can also be found in the command app, right? When you open it at the very top, it says tasks. So check those every day because it's going to remind you to make a call, to call that person. The reason why there's no phone call as the first step is because we're busy agents. There's a really good chance you're out showing a property or taking a listing and a lead comes in. You don't have time to call. So that's why a text goes out. But you can call the next day whenever you want, okay? And you're going to say something similar to them. Uh, hey, hey, Jill, this is Nick with Keller Williams. Just wanted to follow up. I texted you yesterday. You looked at some houses on Facebook. Is that an area that you're interested in moving to? Then you're going to set them up on a, on a saved search. Whether it's through command or through the MLS doesn't really matter. If you, but if you, if you reach them and you get that information, great. If you don't reach them and you don't get that information, that's great too. You're advertising condos for sale. Set them up on a condo search. 
okay? That's what you know until you reach them. That's what you know. And if it's not right, then eventually when you do reach them, they'll tell you. All right, but just get them started on that listing search. On day three, hi, Jill, wanted to send you a revised list of homes for sale for you to take a look at. Let me know how I can be of assistance and if you'd like me to change the criteria so I don't spam you with homes you don't like. All right, so this is coming from a place of value, contribution, customer service. If you're acknowledging that you might be spamming them and you don't want to do that, it's like, I don't want you to unsubscribe, so help me help you, right? That type of thing. On day five, this is a great text. Hope not being a bother. Want to make sure you're being taken care of. What are your thoughts, good or bad, on the homes we've been sending you? This is a great text, and it gets a lot of replies. Because when's the last time a salesperson admitted to being someone to bu bugging somebody? Like never. So you're admitting I might be bothering you, but I really just want to help. Okay. Then you're going to make a call on day six. It's going to remind you to make that call. You're just following up with the with the listings they've been receiving over the last several days. Then on day eight, now this is if you haven't reached them. Just let the smart plan continue. If you have, you got to unsubscribe them from the smart plan. So if you haven't reached them, just keep it going. Sorry, we haven't been able to connect about your home search yet. I know it's a busy time for a lot of people. I saw a few other homes you may like. Can I text those to you or email better? So this just keeps going with, oh, don't want to spam you. Want to make sure you're getting the help you need. Do you have any must-haves should, I should know about? Um, okay, so it's just... A lot of coming from a place of contribution, telling them you're not trying to bother them. You just want to find out you know, what they're looking for. If they're looking to make a move, you want to help. All of these, all of these, um, all of these texts are proven to work in one way or another. But they may not work individually, but they work if they're sent through a plan like this, okay? So this is the this is the campaign you're going to use when we create the when we create our campaign. I'm sorry, this is the smart plan you're going to use when we create the campaign. All right. So now what we want to do is now that we have our smart plan, we're going to add it to our campaign. We're going to do that in a minute. Let's go over to campaigns right over here. Looks like a megaphone. Okay, now we're in campaigns. So we're going to click create campaign up in the in the upper right hand corner. And we're going to create a social ad. And we're going to name it condos in Boise. Our goal is to attract buyers. Now, it has nothing to do with your targeting. For all for all I care, you could say advertise listing or attract listings. You know, it doesn't really matter. It has nothing to do with the targeting. It's just so you know what the ad was for. And then we're going to advertise on Facebook and Instagram, and we're going to create the campaign. Okay. Before we do anything, I want to go to media, and I want to click configure, and I'm going to show you how I'm going to bring that image I just created in designs over into campaigns. All right, so I'm going to click select media and I'm going to click add images and then I'm going to browse the designs library. Here's all my, um, this is all my images, but here's the one I just made. So I'm going to click that and it's going to be it's going to pull it in from designs try that one more time there we go and then when i click preview and crop and it looks like there's a question right here
my internet is going a little bit slow today. Let's try this again. There we go, it worked. Okay, cool. Save image there. And then it brings it in just like that. It looks like there's a couple of questions. Let me jump in real quick. Um, just to confirm personal branding is the only change that needs to be made in your smart plan. Yes, so look through the smart plan. You may need to change a name or two. Make sure it doesn't say Nick. Make sure it says your name. Regarding smart plans, the functionality is smart enough to not send the do not, uh, don't want to spam you if they already replied with you. Okay, no. So the smart plan isn't artificial intelligence. The smart plan is just a drip campaign that automates your texting and emails. So it's not going to reply or not send something. So is it when they reply, you have to unsubscribe them from that plan so it doesn't keep going. So you do that by going to their contact and going to smart plans under their contact and then just unsubscribing them. All right. Cool, cool, cool. All right. So um, great. We bring the image in and we're going to save. Now let's go up to the text field. We're going to create our text. Okay. I'm just going to type out something like this. I'm going to do a little emoji. Here's the little emoji guy with the smiley face. Click on the emoji and find, I find a house and I go. Condos for sale in Boise to the house. This is like a headline. Okay. And so when I do condo, um, when I do condo text or condo ad copy, I usually, it usually says something like, um, I can't type and talk at the same time. So I'm just going to type and then I'm going to talk. <laughs> so literally cannot do both at the same time. Okay. So looking Okay, and then I'm going to do this because I like emojis. I'm going to put a little magnifying glass at the, at the end for searching. All right, so that's what my ad's going to say. You guys can obviously rip that off and use it. Jamie, we're going to get to that in a minute. Jamie's asking what time frame for the ads you think are most effective. We're going to get there. That's at the end. So don't worry, I won't leave you hanging. All right. Um, okay. And then the headline, I'm just going to say, Condors for sale in Boise. And the description, you don't want to, you, you have, this is your description up here. This is misleading, okay? It should just be one sentence. And it's usually this call to action. And I just add the call to action again. Click learn more to start searching. So over here, you can see everything. Up here is the ad copy. And then down at the bottom, this is the this is the um, headline. And then this is what would be the description, but it's another call to action, okay? So calls to action are click learn more to start searching. And when they click learn more, it's gonna go to your website and I'll show you how we do that. So now we're gonna go to, we did media. We're gonna go to Facebook and Instagram settings. And we're gonna choose our page. And when we choose our page, it removes the KW logo and it adds your own page, okay? And you wanna make sure that you have Facebook lead generation form on, okay? 
That way, when they click the ad, a form pops up and it says, is this your information? Name, email, phone number. They click yes. And then when they click yes, you get their name, email, and phone number, and they get to see what you're offering. Now, we want to add our website domain here, okay? So let's go back to where we were on our web, on my website. This was, the, this was the link of the search I created. Now, this search link will be saved. This is, this is a save, like if I open this up on a different uh, browser like this, it'll also then open up to condos in Boise. So if someone clicks it, it's going to open up to condos in Boise. So it's like an evergreen link that always updates because it's IDX feed. So when things come on and off the market, um, they will reflect as such. Okay. So let's go over to create campaign and paste it right in there. And this is going to give us a little check mark when it's when it finishes approving it. There we go. Perfect. Now our website is behind the ad. Okay. Now we're going to go to audience. And we want to build a custom audience. All right. And we don't want an auto, auto audience. We want to choose what interests we want. So custom audience. And what we're going to do here is we're going to target Boise, not Austin. So Boise, Idaho, Boise, yeah, Boise, Idaho. Okay, so check this out over here. This is the audience definition. So it says we're targeting just shy of 400,000 people so far within a 20 mile radius. If we if we extend this to like 50 mile radius, then this is going to get bigger. See it went to 518,000. Right? How big is Boise? Like how many square miles is Boise? Like what kind of what kind of um radius would make sense? Drop it in the chat cuz I have no idea. Um 20 miles. All right, perfect. So let's do 20 mile radius. And then you can see it goes back down to 392. So Dan, 85 square square miles. Okay, so it's a 20 mile radius. Yeah, that's like super intelligent. So I don't, I'm not that smart, Dan. So how many miles radius is that? You can only search as narrow as 15 miles and as wide as 50. So that's why. Let's do 30 and get a few more people out of that. Okay. Interests. Interests, interests. This is the fun part. So, oh, Jamie's asking, what about our large influx of out-of-state buyers? So let's see. Let's try this real quick. I'm glad you brought that up. I'm going to go open another browser tab. And I'm going to go into referrals. And in referrals, I am going to go to the map. All right, right up here. Click on map. Let that open up. There's a reason I'm showing you this. Don't worry. Come on, let's go. Map. There we go. All right. Now, what I want to do here is click on this drop down and go to referral patterns. And I'm going to type up here Boise, Idaho. These are referrals being sent from Boise. These are referrals being received to Boise. So this is a pretty sweet uh, piece of data that we have. It looks like 
five percent of referrals received from Portland were sent. Uh, five percent of referrals received to Boise this year came so far came from Portland. Four percent came from this town with a super fancy French name. So it looks like if you wanted to, if you want, like, if you wanted to create, these are referral patterns. These aren't migration patterns. They're referral patterns. But like, if you wanted to create an ad that targets people in Portland, that'd be a good idea. And if you went into a, um, yes, Dan, these are only through command and just KW. Um, this is only front through command. So if you're not sending and receiving referrals through command, it will not be calculated. That's why it's so important to use command in this sense, because they can only use the data that's input, input it into it. Uh, but this is cool to also use on a listing consultation. Well, what are you gonna do that's different than the other guy? Well, let me show you. Oh, it looks like our data shows so we're going to advertise your home, not just locally, but nationally. And we're going to target people in Portland. Like, you're going to get the listing. Like, you know what I mean? So it's kind of a no-brainer. So, yeah, definitely if you want to target out-of-state buyers, you just put the city and state that you want to target. There you go. But we're just going to do Boise to make it easy for us today, okay? Uh, 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 um. All right, interests. I'm going to just grab a bunch of interests and then at the end, you can take a screenshot, okay? At the end, you can take a picture of all the interests that I have, so don't worry. Okay, so what I've got here is my interests. These are, this is going to help me get in front of people who match interests relating to real estate investing or finance or mortgage loans or mortgage calculator or mortgage insurance or pre qualification. It's not going to put me in front of, you know, 10 or 12 people that have all of these interests. Right? You're not going to find that person. But because these aren't matched together, it's like one or the other, you will do this. You will narrow the audience right down here. And you will do this. You will type Zillow. Realtor.com. And if you really want to get crazy, condominium okay because we're you remember we're this ad is advertising condos so now what we're doing here is we are getting in front of people who are interested in real estate investing and zillow realtor.com and condos interested in mortgage insurance and zillow realtor.com and condos interested in moving companies and interested in Zillow, realtor.com and condos. So it's one of these up here matching these three at the bottom. And you can see here before we went from like 
392,000 people to like 281,000 people. Okay, so we got a little bit more defined. All right, so take a screenshot of that. And save. Lead settings. So I'm going to do the smart plan first. All right, we're going to assign the smart plan. And when you assign it, that's going to then deploy the smart plan when the lead comes in. Between the hours of, I believe, 11 a.m. Eastern and 8 p.m. Eastern. So, like, I think it should be like uh, nine o'clock your time is when the smart plans deploy. Okay. So if a lead comes in at two in the morning, they're not going to get a text. It'll wait until the following morning to send the text out. Okay. So this is how you do it. You just find the smart plan and add it. Boom. If you want to add tags, you can add tags. If you don't have a tag in the system, create new tag, give it a color, add it, okay? So this will help you identify these people. When the lead comes in, they're gonna get automatically tagged with the Facebook lead, Boise and condos, and the smart plan will start. So you'll be able to find them easily based on the tags, and the smart plan will deploy and start sending out the text message the way that the, in the cadence in which it's written. Duration and budget. This is the biggest question I always get. How long? So this really like depends because this is a great brand awareness campaign because it really could be run for as long as you want or as short as you want because the destination link that people are being sent to is evergreen in that it's not static it's dynamic but it always makes sense so houses are always coming on and off the market and so that reflects it reflects the houses coming on and off the market on your website so you could really like run this ad for a dollar a day for 365 days or you could run it for a hundred bucks for 10 days at ten dollars a day it doesn't matter. Like you could run it for as long as you want or as short as you want because it's an ad that is always advertising the newest listings. Running it for a longer period of time could be helpful. So, you know, I always suggest at least five bucks a day. It's like I always suggest, but not if you're running it for a year. Like if you're running it for a year, try like, or, or like a month or two months, like try like two bucks a day for 30 days, you know? Uh, that's what I would suggest, or like five dollars a day for twenty days. It really doesn't matter. Like, there's no wrong or right way. Um, the more money you put behind it, and the shorter period of time that you set it for, the the quicker you're going to get leads. Okay, the longer period of time, like if I did a hundred dollars for a hundred days or $100 for 10 days, I would probably get the same amount of leads over the course of those day, of, over the course of those two lengths. I would just get them a lot quicker running it in a shorter duration. Okay, so like you click your starting date, you click your ending date with the calendar, and then down here, your budget, Okay, let's say it's $100 for 10 days. It's going to, then you're going to use automatic placements. Okay, so you're going to allow Facebook and Instagram decide how to most effectively spend your money. If your ad is performing better on Instagram, that's where your money's going to go. If your ad is performing better on Facebook, that's where your money's going to go. So you're going to spend a total of $10 a day, $5 on each channel. All right, and we'll save that. And then we're going to publish and create campaign and you're good to go. This is your app. Um, like I said before, if you wanna do, let's say we do condos 
that have, let me click the more tab, scroll down here, that have recently had price reductions. Now we have an ad advertising condos in Boise that have recently been reduced in price. So you could run that and use this link, or you could do condos in Boise that have open houses. There's only two of them, so that's not going to do much. But condos that have recently been reduced in price, that's a very niche um, ad, which could perform very, very well. Um, or do houses. Or oh wow, okay, so there's 83 homes for sale that have pools. Okay, no, nope, there's 210 properties for sale in Boise that have pools. Okay, so what I did was this I went to more and I typed in pool and I clicked under amenities, I clicked pool and clicked houses. There's 210 homes for sale in Boise right now that have a pool. Or let's see if I do condos. 62 property, 62 condominiums in Boise right now that have pools. You could run an ad advertising condos in Boise with a pool. That's very niche. And those do very well because you're hitting a specific need. And you just use this link. So, um, so Jill, you're asking thoughts on a great ad to attract sellers specifically. You're going to get buyers. That's just how it's going to go. Um, you can do, um, you can do an ad advertising homes that are pending. I actually have a video on my YouTube channel that create that where I create an ad like this. So homes that are pending, right? You guys are a non-disclosure state. Um, so, you know, I don't know if you could do this, but like pending homes, what homes have recently received offers in your neighborhood, right? You don't know the selling price. You only know that it's pending and you know that there's activity. Um, so that's one that you could create using pending properties, um, advertising homes that have recently received offers, et cetera. But what I would do is to, to get in front of buy, to get in front of homeowners, it's all in your targeting. So here's some, so home for sale by owner, home equity, home equity loan, home equity line of credit. Those are all homeowner specific targets. So it's all in your targeting. That's really what it has to do with. Does that make sense? What are Facebook and Instagram doing with $5 a day for a week versus $50 a day for a week? Just trying to understand what the money pays for if the duration is static. Um, the duration is not static. So when you're choosing use automatic placements, it's going to decide where your money should be spent based on how it's performing. If you're distributing evenly, then it's static. This is dynamic. So um, if you spend more money in a shorter period of time, Facebook is going to try to get you more leads in a shorter period of time. If you're spending more, if you're spending uh, the same amount of money, like $50 over 50 days, it's gonna, it's not gonna push your ad out as, as aggressively. So you're going to get like, you know, a lead every other day or something like that, maybe. So that's typically the difference. Okay, so yeah, so this strategy has worked very well for me. Um, I want you guys to go and try it. Um, so Jane's asking, I was told that choosing Zillow and Realtor.com will advertise to Realtors. No, incorrect. Zillow and Realtor.com are consumer platforms. If you chose Zillow Premier Agent or Realtor.com Pro, which is also an option, then you'll get in front of agents. But when you're choosing Zillow and Realtor.com, you're going to get in front of consumers because those are consumer platforms. So do not avoid those. You want to get in front of people who are looking on those sites. Does that make sense? 
Cool, cool, cool. Um, awesome, guys. Well, we are done. And uh, I hope that you got value. Uh, I'm going to drop my calendar link in the chat for you guys. And I'm also going to email it out. So if any of you guys want to set up a one-on-one, -on -one, let me just send it here. So here's my calendar. I'll just add in there that you guys definitely should be taking advantage of that. This is a great opportunity to have that one-on-one -on -one time with Nick. Yeah, there's the there. I would love to do it. And there's my, it's only for the top 20%. There's my calendar link in the chat. I'll also send it out with the email of the recording. So you'll have it there, but just grab that link and bookmark it. And um, let's set up some calls. I can help you through, you know, understanding anything around command in your business. If you're not using it at a higher level and you want to, I can help you. If you're using it at a higher level and you want to learn new strategies, I can help you. So you know, let's get on those calls and we'll be doing a class like this every month. And so I'll be sending that, that information over to Cindy. So it'll be on the calendars. Um, yeah. So I appreciate you guys being on the call. And again, this guys. is just, this is special for the cappers of the company. So please don't share this with non-capping agents. This is just special for you guys. Jeff yeah, will only. be working with those agents, the non-capping agents. So only you guys. Because you're special. You're special. Special. All right, guys. Dan loves being special. Hey, Dan. <laughs> Appreciate you. I'll see you on the next one. Thanks, Nick.